This is Top Color Peridot, an electric green, and it comes from Pakistan. Thanks, Joe. This rough is currently 14 carats and about 12 by 10 by 9.5. After I get this piece of rough glued onto a brass dock, I will select another similar sized piece of Chinese Peridot of great color, sour apple green, and cut both stones at the same time and there, then compare the color between the top Pakistani colored peridot and very good sour apple green colored peridot from China. The difference in cost is about five times. Okay, I will have two pieces of rough I want to cut so we can compare the color of two great colored stones from different regions. Now I need a design. And since the goal is to evaluate the color of these two pieces of peridot, I'm looking for a deep cut stone, a barium. This is because the deeper the cut, the darker or richer the color will be. Of course, for a dark stone like many garnets, you don't want a deep cut because the resulting stone will be too dark. But in this case, I want to see how darkening the color, getting a more rich color will affect the stones. I want to see if the top color is really that much different from excellent color, fair enough. I think I will cut these two gemstones into one of my favorite designs, the Simple Portuguese by the late Jeff Graham. For most of Jeff's designs, you need to buy the book that he published the design in. But for about two dozen of Jeff's personal favorites, he put the designs into the public domain for all gem cutters to freely use. This is one of those designs. I explain in another video how to go back in time and access Jeff's old website and get access to all his publicly available designs. And by the way, also get access to his treasure trove of articles on gem cutting. Here is the video where I show you how to go to Jeff's now closed website. I cut this design often, so I know it won't impact my evaluation on these two pieces of Peridot rock. Again, my goal is to evaluate the color of these two gemstones after I, I polish them to determine if it was worth the significant extra cost to get a little better colored rock. Let's find out. And don't let all the information on one of these gem cutting designs confuse you. I made a two part video and explained all the information about how to read gem fasting diagrams. So take a look at these videos if you have any questions or want to better understand the information on these diagrams. So if I cut this peridot correctly, the two gem stones should look like this from the top, side, and bottom when I'm finished. I examined this peridot from Pakistan with refractol. And even though the refractive index, index of peridot is not exactly the same as refractol, it is very close with peridot at between 1.65 and 1.703 and refractol with 1.567. I can see because of the refractol, this stone is clean. Most importantly, I don't see any of those nasty little lily pad inclusions that Peridot is famous for. I am using some modeling clay with the bottom dot because the bottom part of my rough is not flat. The modeling clay allows me to ensure the top part of the rough fits flatly onto the top dot. The top dot that I'm currently using is oversized. That's not the one I'm going to use. I always pick a dot that's almost the same size as the top of the rough. This helps me 
to make it easy to center the rough under the dock. The more centered you get your rough, the less waste of rough you'll have when you're cutting. So after I put this stone into the modeling clay to ensure it's held in place by the modeling clay, I will then switch out the top dock with a much smaller dock that I will secure the stone with using two-part epoxy. And for new cutters, I, I, I can tell you the tendency is to put a larger dock onto the stone and, and when you're adhering the dock to the stone. This is a mistake. Go smaller. What ultimately happens is that as you cut the girdle and you run into issues with inclusions or cracks, you always end up cutting it more than you expected to. And pretty soon you're cutting into the dock. So you have to stop and redock, or you risk the stone falling off the dock if you cut too close to the dock. So use smaller dock um, than even you think is necessary. So when you're mixing the epoxy, just put two puddles of epoxy onto a business card and just eyeball it so they're about 50-50 mix. And by the way, a viewer once asked me about bubbles in the epoxy and whether that's going to affect how well it adheres to the stone. Bubbles are not a problem. Don't worry about them at all. Don't even think about it. Once I put on the epoxy, I then rotate the transfer jig so that gravity doesn't let the epoxy flow too far down the dock or over the side of the gemstone. Rotate your transfer jig as necessary until the epoxy starts to set up, which just takes a couple of minutes. Okay, this is the second piece of Peridot Rough that I will use in this color comparison. This piece is Sour Apple Green and is from China. Again, this rough comes from Joe H. And this rough is 13.35 carats and measures about 14 by 13 by 11. So both pieces are roughly about the same. The color is great, but it's significantly less expensive than the top color piece, Peridot Rough that I have in the other example. Okay, I finished preforming both of our Peridot with the uh, 320 grit topper. I did the, uh, actually the, the, this one first, and then because of the key dot feature, I just popped it out, popped the next one in, and without changing laps, I uh, went through this one with the 320. Now, leaving this one in, I've changed lap to my 600 lap, and I'll, and I'll go ahead and uh, pre-polish this one with my 600, and then using the key dot feature, take this out of the dot, out of the quill, and put our other one in. Now, can you tell the difference between them? Again, one is about five times the cost of the other. Color is the reason, so one should be a much more vivid color. Uh, I'm certainly seeing a better color. Not sure. Let's see how it looks when they're done. But this is this is the one that's, like I said, probably five times the cost. So, per carat. Okay, I'm ready to polish one of our Peridot. And uh, I want to take a look at it compared to the other one. As this one's ready to for polish. The other Peridot is not ready for polish yet. It still has a my 12M and then probably 3K on the bat lap and then it'll be comparable. But I want to take a look at the color to see, again, the one, the more polished one is significantly m more expensive in the rough uh, because supposedly the color's better and uh, I'm starting to become a believer, Joe, uh, Joe H. At, uh, Definitely looks like better color. We'll wait till we get this one pre-polished or polished and then see how we're doing. But it definitely does look like this has a bit much better color. Although this is beautiful color for Peridot. So I think I'm gonna polish this with uh, pandemonium. John Rolfe's uh, invention, 60K diamond. Kind of like, looks like a chapstick. And I'm going to use that with 60K diamond on a bat lap and see if I can polish up our Peridot that way. 
I finished polishing the pavilion of our one bar Peridot with the uh, 60,000 grit diamond on a bat lap from uh, the pandemonium diamond sticks from John Gerlus Roth. Now I'll transfer this stone so we can cut the crown and I'll work on our other peridot. Okay, I've finished preforming uh, the larger of our two peridot with the uh, 3000 grit diamond on a bat lap. And now I'll go and polish it just like I did the other peridot. I'll use 60,000 grit diamond on a bat lap and polish this uh, pavilion. Okay, I wanted to show you what a typical peridot inclusion called a lily pad looks like. I was hoping not to find any because this rough, I you know, pick it out to be clean. But there is, a, there is, this is a uh, lily pad right here. It's black and then as you get the light, as the light hits it just right, it forms what around that black spot like a lily pad. Now, fortunately, this will be easily cut off because we'll be cutting inward on the crown and that's near the uh, surface. But that's a lily pad and that's when you buy Peridot, if you have a lot of these black spots, black lily pads, you're going to have trouble uh, polishing uh, your Peridot. So try to buy rough, Peridot rough without inclusions or lily pads. So I've finished polishing our the larger of the two Peridot and I used uh, 60,000 grit diamond on a bat lap. I could have used a tin lap with aluminum oxide but I've been using my tin lap with cerium oxide and I didn't want to wash off the cerium oxide, scrub the lap and use aluminum oxide. It probably wouldn't cause any problem but right now that tin lap's working perfect with my quartzes and, and It'll work perfect with barrel, quartz, opal, other stones with cerium oxide. So I'm just gonna leave that with cerium oxide and I'll use, wanted to find another lap to use for the stones that cerium oxide doesn't polish. And uh, that lap with 60,000 grit works fine. I've got some other laps that'll work great. So just every once in a while I need to pull them out of the uh, toolbox and give them a try. So I'll transfer this peridot uh, in my transfer jig and we'll cut the uh, the crown or the upper half of the stone. And our top color peridot, I just uh, finished preforming with the 320 grit uh, topper lap. Although there's four tiers on the, uh, the crown, the upper half of the stone and the table, uh, at this stage I'm just cutting the first tier, the first row of facets. There's no need to do the other three rows at this stage because when I use the 600 grit topper next, it's gonna to cut through them all anyway. So you just be, I'm saving 16 facets per row times three rows, uh, 48 facets, 48 cuts that I don't need to make. So just make the first row on your uh, 320 and I still have plenty of room before on the girdle but I'll use the 600 grit topper and that'll bring the facets down a little bit. And then uh, my 12 am will bring them down uh, to pretty much where I want the girdle to be. And then 3000 grit diamond on that lap and then we'll polish. Okay, I just finished uh, going over my Peridot with a 600 grit topper lap sitting on the master lap. These are thin disposable laps. Good enough at the 600 range, made in, I think, China. So the way I clean them off after I've used them is with uh, lava soap. Just get a good drip of water going and I bring it up about between 600, 700 RPMs and go over it about three times. Then I increase the drip to 
and wash it all off. Increase the uh, RPMs. And then I turn the water off and spin dry the lap so it doesn't rust. And then I'll put my 600 grit topper away. Sometimes they're hard to remove. The way I do it is just lift uh, my base plate up, slide the topper over, and that kind of forces it to eject. Again, a topper is a thin, basically disposable lap. And again, I'd have one at the 300 grit range and the 600 range, I would not get a topper any finer than that because they wobble a little bit. So I, that's the only toppers I would use. Okay, so with my 600 uh, grit topper, I cut the uh, facets down to where I want the girdle about to be. Again, as with the 320 grit topper, all I did was cut the first row of facets I didn't bother with the other three rows, saving me 48 facets that I don't need to cut. Uh, when I use the 12M, that I cut, I'll cut the other, at least one, maybe two rows of the other facets. And then with the pre-polish, pre I'll get the final row of facets in there. So the girdle, girdle width, again, you need, you need a girdle of some kind. Uh, otherwise, what you'll find is when your jeweler sets your stones, they'll chip um, if you have a kind of a knife edge girdle or you know, no girdle at all called the knife edge. So how wide should the girdle be? There's, there's a lot of debate. Some people say five millimeters, some people say three millimeters. I know very, very famous faster focused on two millimeters or I'm sorry, 0.2 millimeters, 0.5 millimeters and 0.3 millimeters. So he used 0.2 millimeters. So at this stage, they're about 0.5 millimeters for my girdle. And then my next cut will be with the 12M and I'll bring it down. I shoot for about 0.3 millimeters, which is about the thickness, the thickness of your fingernail, not much. So how do you know where you're at? For years and years and years, I've used a steel wire gauge and I marked where 0.3 millimeters is, and I had marked where 0.5 was. Now it's all rubbed off after the year. So this is 0.5, I scratched it in there, is 0.5. So what I do is I set 0.5 up next uh, to your girdle, and then with your loop, you see that it's about 0.5 millimeters. And then again, when I go over the next one, with my 12M, the next set of facets, I'll be shooting for 0.3 millimeters. So that's how, this is the tool I've used for years and years and years. Uh, I'm gonna upgrade to a, a loop that has the uh, information in the loop, you know, so, but for now, uh, if you're just starting out, this works great. Again, I've used it so much, I've rubbed the paint off of it. So now I'll go on and continue cutting with my 12M. Finish polishing the crown, upper half of our peridot. So I'll take this off the top and I'll finish working on the other peridot and then I'll cut the two tables one after the other with only having to set, set up the table cut one time. It's looking pretty nice. Okay, I finished polishing the crown of our second, the larger stone. And uh, surprisingly, it darkened up a little bit. So now I'm not sure if there's that much difference in the color. We'll wait till we cut the table on both of these and then soak it in acetone and take them off the top and then we'll see how much they sparkle. So next step is to set up uh, for a table to cut both these stones and then we're pretty much done. Okay, I finished polishing the table of our two peridot. So now I'll put it in acetone 
and uh, remove the stones from the top. Then we'll take a, a final look at these stones and weigh them and measure them and then send them to Bopi. The Simple Portuguese is a design that any cutter can cut. You just need a little patience as there are a lot of facets. And another thing I did differently in cutting these gemstones is that I used my 60K polycrystalline diamond pandemonium stick from Gearloose on a bat lap. I have many laps that can polish paradigm, but I wanted to take my 60K bat lap out of the toolbox and give it a workout this time. So I haven't used it in a while. But the main goal again in cutting these two stones is to compare the color of the finished gemstone. Because the Portuguese cut is a deep cut, it tends to rich in the color, which is what I think happened in the case of our Chinese piece of rock. Both gemstones are a beautiful, rich green color. Absolutely awesome for Peridot. So is it worth paying significantly more for the rough as compared to the good, excellent quality sour green, sour apple green Peridot rough? Well, ultimately that's up to you to decide. I really love both of these gemstones. The color of both stones are amazing. But for me, based on this very unscientific comparison, I think the Sour Apple Green Peridot from China is an excellent buy-in rough. What do you think? Please let me know in the comments. Happy faceting, everyone.